Fighting all the danger Never known where I'm gonna go Feeling lonely and wonder That I was seeking answers When I felt your spirit touch my soul Well I never know surrender But lay down my heart's desires And I let go of my control Flesh is telling me to run away to turn back from this place But you all I wanna know It's only the shines of morning sun It's only the gives us our instruction yeah. It's only the show of who I am Everything seems to go wrong everybody my name is Jason I'm Caden I'm Jaden I'm Nicole I'm Eli and we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel and our family is your family we love you guys tremendously and it is a Shabbat it is the day that our Creator has made to rest it is a day to just chill and we thank you guys family we love you guys very very much every one of you guys whether you're here right now or whether you guys are watching this in the future we love you guys very very much and thank you guys for joining us in here <clears throat> mr caden will you please open us with a word of prayer say father we thank you for this day and we thank you for bringing us all together 
after a week of trials and tribulations, you have set apart a day where we can forget all that or we can just rest and relax and have a day that our minds are at peace, our day is at ease, and that you have known that we as humans cannot handle full seven days of work you give into us because you love us, you care for us, and I ask that we take this day and we learn from this day and we learn from your word, your example, how you rest on the seventh day, and we rest as you have rested. I thank you for this family, I thank you for the people you have brought around us, and I ask that today is blessed, that your will is done through us, that your words are spoken through us, and that we learn what we are supposed to learn today. I thank you for everything in your son's name. Amen. Amen. All right, family. Um, we really, really appreciate you guys, and we hope that you guys are having a wonderful week. Let us begin. Jade, are you ready to give us the um, Shema? Shema. Yes. <clears throat> Let's hit this. Mr. All right. Jade. Here, O Yisrael, Yahuwah Elohim is one, and you shall love Yahuwah Elohim with all your heart and with all your being and with all your might. And these words which I am commanding you today shall be in your heart. And, and you shall I'll impress them upon your children, and shall speak of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be front lines between your eyes. And you shall write them on your doorpost and of your house, and on your gates. Okay, beautiful. Thank you very, very much. Now, I, I want to kind of open up the floor and open up the forum, and I think there's something that we should all probably talk about. And this is something that <clears throat> when we... A lot of us, I get uh, most of us probably have all grown up in some sort of an indoctrination or grown up outside of scriptures to where we have influences that are, we, we just don't know where we got them. And one of the ones, you know, I was a, uh, I guess a 35 year vet of the Christian religion. I spent my entire life in the Christian religion and that's all I knew. And I began teaching the ways of the Christian religion and one of the things that I always taught people was the whole egg thing, right? <clears throat> that our creator, his son, and the Ruha HaKadosh are like an egg. It's all the same being, but yet it's different, but yet it's all the same. And it didn't make a lot of sense, but I knew what I was teaching because I had been taught that, and that's all I knew. Now, when we started reading scriptures, like really reading scriptures about 10 years ago, it became very, very clear that that wasn't exactly right. And when we're sitting here reading Deuteronomy, the very first thing that we have is, Hear, O Yashrael, Yahuwah Elohim is one. Right out of the gate, in our Torah, we are told that there are no other Elohims before Yahuwah, that he is a jealous Elohim, and that there's just, there's no one else. And so when we take on these doctrines of religion, we oftentimes will get confused. And oftentimes that can become a very dangerous mistake because we will have people that will pray to Messiah, that will pray to the, the Ruha Kakadesh, and our creator wants us to be with him. He wants us to be in prayer with him. It is a direct line directly to him. And so when we have basically indoctrination that says we have a three in one, that is the same as a lot of the pagans used to have. There, there were tons of different times in history where the pagans have the same kind of deities. They have a three in one and they have, you know, it, it's very, very confusing. So gentlemen, let's talk about this just a little bit. And guys here on the floor, let's talk about this as well. This is the Trinity talk. Let's, let's talk about what does scripture say? Does Messiah Yahushua or those, or you, most of you guys know him as Jesus the Christ, but there were no J's in Hebrew. Does Messiah Yahushua ever claim to be Elohim? No, he claims to be his son. And that's where the Pharisees were angry with him because they say that that made him higher than them. Right. What other places do we have in scriptures? Where does it tell us this for sure? Well, it tells us in they the, tell, the yeah. Old New Testament, the entire yeah. Old Testament, Yahuwah always goes, I am one. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Yeah, and there is a tremendous amount of even extracurricular books. You don't even have to go into the extracurricular books, like the, the second or third Ezra, where it clearly says that our creator is going to send his son. It all throughout scriptures, we have prophecy that talks about our savior, talks about salvation. And it is a very dangerous road when we make our Messiah, Yahushua, into our Elohim most high. And so if anyone out there is, is um, confused on this, please let us know in the scriptures I have, or in the, in the comments, I have many documents that I've put together that clearly, you know, I've gone verse by verse by verse. And I will tell you guys, after reading scriptures, I don't know how many times I've read through, there is no place anywhere in scriptures that it says 
our Messiah is the same as his father. They are two separate individuals. They are two separate entities. And <clears throat> when we are stuck in this indoctrination, it gets very, very confusing. And so let us begin with that. And I just kind of want to throw that out there. Mystical, who do we have um, in, in our chat? Well, we have quite a few people. All right, let's, let's say hi to our family. Let fam. me get back up here at the top. Let's so we have Project Glenn. We have Joanna, Zachariah Z, Rhiannon, and Damon. We have, hold on, scrolling, Miss M. I don't know who that She's is. New. That's a new I one. don't know who Miss M is. Hi, Miss M. Cover to cover with Jeremy. Hey, Jeremy. What's up, brother? Philly. Billy. Win Feather is here today. Hi, Win. Um, Drag is here. Drag. Much love, brother. Have... Tess, I see Tess in there. Tess just popped in. Bobby Zines. Bobby Chris Z. Here. Yeah, yeah. Chris from the Bobby Z channel, guys. And the scriptures that we are reading, Chris is a warrior for Yahuwah. This guy put together much of the New Testament of the scriptures that we put together. This guy uh, slaved away for, uh, it seems like, months, and he was always tossing out these scriptures, getting them to where we are able to get these scriptures out. So much love to you, brother. Thank you for that dedication for doing this stuff. We have Sylvia. Miss, Miss Ewards. Hi, Sylvia. We have C.A. That I, is Rhiannon's mom. Oh, hi, Rhiannon's mom. Hi, Rhiannon's mom. How are you? We have a new name, Irene. Irene, how are um, you? And I think, and we got Tess, you said... Cindy oh, the Grand's here. Cindy LJ. Hey. The Grand, she made it. The Grand. Grand. All right. Wow. This is so amazing. Wow. This is this is like a very blessed Shabbat. Um, we are Baruch by this. And it's, it's crazy how close we get to you guys simply by you guys hanging around. And, you know, like I, I'm very, very honest when I say our family is your family and your family is our family. And, you know, this is what the kingdom family is about, right? It's about people that are seeking our creator, seeking his laws, statutes, and commands, loving our Messiah. And, you know, I, I just can't wait for the kingdom to come. Amazing. This is going to be amazing, amazing, amazing. All right. Everybody, are you ready to do this? Yep. All right. We're going to do what we do every single Shabbat, which is probably the most amazing moments of the Shabbat, is which we go over the most blessed things that we have been given as human beings besides our Messiah. Our Messiah was absolutely the critical piece of all of this. But prior to the Messiah, the people that were saved had something that everyone else didn't. They had obedience to the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator. And going back to that entire religion and how we ended up with, um, you know, when I was in the Christian religion, I don't know how many times I told people the laws of God were nailed to the tree. I have no idea how many people I probably sent down the complete wrong path, and I will definitely be judged for that. Now, when we look at these laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator, it is very, very clear. They are very easy to keep. They are very obviously good things in our lives. And if we hold them and we make them part of our lives, we will be very um, abundant in the kingdom road that we are going. So we will do what we have always done on every Shabbat and we will read these. And again, this is just like the old people, the old people back in the days of after, uh, captivity, when Ezra, the priest was out there, he was sitting there and these people, when they were hearing this Torah, the people were crying and cheering and repenting and coming to our creator. And that's what this is all about. And the Torah is the beginning of our kingdom walk. And so this is why we focus on the Torah on this channel. And let's begin. Commandment number one, the very first thing that we find anywhere, which is basically a guide to life, is to be fruitful. All right, let's hit it. Multiply. Boys. Replenish the earth. So do it. Have you been over the fish, fowl, and every living creature? The herb bearing in every for food. Man and woman should build their own families. Master sin. Every clean moving can't live shall be food for you. Do not eat the blood, for there is life in the blood. A lot of people will do that, and a lot of people will argue that eating a rare steak is not eating the blood. But, man, there is blood dripping off this stuff, and so we are told not to do that. We need to be very holy in this, and there's a reason that we don't eat the blood. And, this, and our creator says there's life in that, and so we must not drink and eat the blood. Ten. Walk before me and be perfect. Guard your who's covenant, law, statutes, and commandments. Everybody. Reiterated 53-plus times, my friends. Again, let's take a look at this, and um, Ms. Nicole, you'll have to do the uh, chat. Let me know if anything awesome happens in the chat. 53, over 53 times, my friends, this is what the commandment says. Guard Yahuwah's covenant, laws, statutes, and commandments. And I oftentimes will pause on this because it is one of these that we have no other commandments 
with this kind of reiteration. They just don't exist. We've gone through as a family um, over the years and documented every place that we can find these commandments. And this commandment beats every other commandment. So if it wasn't important, it wouldn't be in there. If it was important, we might see it one or two times. If it's really important, well, there's 53 times, folks. All right. Every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. Teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Keep the Passover. Keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Matzah. There's no, there's one Torah for the Let's go back to this again because there, even though we have, we're in numbers here, it, this, uh, for our channel, if we get more than 50 views on a uh, video, that's like, uh, that, that's huge for us. So this is one of these videos that does get out little bit more than normal and a lot of people don't understand what that means when it says there's one Torah for the stranger and one for the Ibrahim if we're talking about an Ibrahim we're talking about a basically a Hebrew person it's it's you know the, the whole thing of a religion and hooking your star to some religion there is no religion there is Yah's ways and then there's the world's ways and if you want to be a child of the Most High which the scripture says clearly you need to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, as well as have the faith of Messiah Yahushua. So when we have one Torah for the stranger and one for the Ibrahim, that means all of these religions of the world are not so good because they go against the Torah. And you can give me any religion at anywhere, and if I start studying their, their doctrine within the religion, they usually, within the very first minute, completely bust through on the words of Torah. So... Um, that's it. What we're reading right now is the laws of the Most High. Sanctify all firstborn to Yahuwah. There are no mighty ones before Yahuwah. You shall not make graven images. Do not bring Yahuwah's name to naught. Keep the Shabbat. Honor your parents. Do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not cut anything of your neighbors. Do not make an, an altar from rock that a tool has touched. Do not go up the altar by the steps. If a man steals cattle, he shall restore it five times. Yahuwah's laws are criminals. Do not lie with a beast. No sacrifice to other gods. Do not oppress a stranger, fatherless, or widow. Do not charge your brother interest. If you borrow your neighbor's raiment, return it to him before sunset. Do not curse the ruler of your people. Do not eat what is torn of any beast. Do not fall through court. Do not follow the multitude of evil. And guys, that is, that is, you know, I want to pause on this one right here because there are a lot of people that are supporting very evil things. And sometimes it feels like there's a huge crowd and it feels like you are in the minority. And guys, we are in the minority of this. There are not a tremendous amount of people that are dedicating themselves to the law, statutes, and commands. And the following the multitude of evil is anybody that is supporting evil. If there's a group of people that are, you know, supporting somebody in, in different groups that are completely evil, and they're they're not addressing the evil that is within the room, and you're with them, and just to be part of it, that's wrong. And so anybody that is supporting evil and following through the multitude of evil is is evil by definition all right do not judge unrighteously against the poor bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray help the animals of your enemy stay away from rumors and gossipers take no bribes do not oppress the stranger love the stranger do your land rest in the seventh year do not mention any pagan names keep the feast of yahuwah do not cook your goat in his mother's milk obey the messenger yahuwah sends before you do not bow down to other elohim Serve Yahuwah. Make no covenant with Elohim or outside of the land. Do not make a use of this oil on a normal person. Do not make a use of this perfume on a normal person. Do not eat the fat. And again, there's there's the the thing, and I you know I my dear old mom I have to I got to throw under the bus even though I love dear mom, but she will sit there and cut the steak and just cut off a chunk of fat and she saves it to the very end, for like the morsel like the most tastiest thing ever and it's always like extremely disgusting. And I never realized why it was so nasty. But then, you know, we have this thing about do not eat the fat. And so, guys, there's, we don't eat the blood and we don't eat the fat. We got to be cling. We got to keep our hands cling, our mouths cling, everything to be holy with our creator. Okay. Do what you say you are going to do. Return all your neighbors. Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. When it's time of separation. Obey Yahuwah's hygiene laws. Keep the day of atonement, Yom Kippurim. Do not uncover the nakedness of your family. Do not take your woman's sister for wife. Do not lie with a woman in her uncleanness. You shall not sacrifice your children to Moloch. Do not be a sodomite. Be holy. Do not reap the corners of your field, or you shall not glean your vineyard. Do not deal falsely with your father. Do not lie or be a liar. Pay your workers for the day's wage they are due. Do not harm the disabled. Do not endanger your neighbor. Do not hate your brother. Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do not divert your cattle. Do not mangle your seed. Let's go back one. Let's go back to 79. 
Love your neighbor as yourself, right? We have what the back in the Christian religion, I remember this very clearly that we were taught there's really only two commandments, right? To love our Elohim most high with all our heart, with all our mind, and with all our soul, and to love our neighbor as ourself. Now, when you actually read what Messiah was saying, he said the greatest of the commandments. He never said these are the only two commandments. But let's take this for example if there was only two commandments. And the very first one was that you love your Elohim with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. If you are outside of the covenant of what he wishes us to do, then you are not loving him with all your heart, mind, and soul. You can't say you love your spouse or your parents if you are completely beating them all the time and yelling at them and screaming at them. It, it just doesn't work that way. It is the same with our creator. And if he was told us that we have to love him with all our heart, mind, and soul, and there's zero reason that we should not. He gave us life. He gave us the ability to hear. He gave us our eyes. He gave us a body we can, we can function with. He gave us a brain we can think with. He gave us free will that we can either choose evil or we can choose the way of righteousness. And so when we love our creator with all our heart, mind, and soul, it means that we are obeying him, that we are in obedience. And the Christians will say, you know, that's a yoke, Jason. That is, a, that is just bondage. You're putting the shackles on you. And Paul says we came and the law is no more. And the people that say that are don't understand. They have not read very clearly the beginning of the book to the end of the book. Because when we run into doctrine that you might confuse that the laws are gone, then you simply need to go back to Genesis and you need to get dialed in on this because there is no such place anywhere in scriptures that says the laws of our creator are no more. In fact, Revelation 12, 14 says, those who are saved are the ones who are obeying the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator as well as those with the faith of Messiah Yahushua. All right, let's continue on. Do not diverse your cattle. Do not, Do not mingle your seed. Do not mingle them in your wool. Do not like to take one. Do not eat the fruit of the trees for three years. Do not practice the corners of your head. And do not kill yourself for the dead. Do not get taken. Prostitute your daughter. Do not defile your temple. Do not consult the medium. Respect your elders. Have correct weights and measures. Do not walk in the manner of the nation. We keep the feast of first, uh, first fruits. Shavuot, Omer count. Keep the feast of trumpets. Yom Tara. Keep the feast of Sukkot. Shemni Atzeret. If you blast your name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. If you kill your neighbor's animal, you must give him a Pay injury for injury. Honor the Jubilee year. Confess your sins to Yahuwah and you pay who you have trespassed against. The Torah of being a Nazir. Wear easy on the four corners of your garments. The law of whoever touches the corpse. Follow Yahuwah's laws of inheritance. The Torah of keeping your oath, Yahuwah. Do not add or take away from the word. Okay, and that's, let's stop and let's talk and pause on that one real quick. This is extremely important, right? The laws, statutes, and commandments that we are reading right now are what you call the Torah. In the religion of Judaism and every other religion, they break this commandment. Deuteronomy 4.2 gets smoked all the time. There's, it doesn't matter what religion you are in. If you think that you should be worshiping on a Sunday, you've just broken Deuteronomy 4.2. If you think that Messiah made all food cling, then you're breaking Deuteronomy 4.2. All of these things, if you're not loving your neighbor or you're adding to it or all this other stuff, we're breaking this. We can't take away from the Torah. And so any religion, and that's how you would qualify a religion, does anything that you are reading, is it contrary to the Torah? If it is, dump it. It's not right for you. And that takes us to the next one, which is guard your soul, which is what our mission is, is trying to get people to realize is that we have 120 years to make this right. We have 120 years that we can come out of captivity, that we can figure out the rights and the wrongs. All of us have had a Bible in our grasp in our lifetime, and there's no reason, unless we are lazy or we don't care, that we haven't picked this up and read it. That's the problem with Christianity is they do not encourage you to read your scriptures. You will have a guy in a pulpit on a church that's a 501c3, and he will tell you bits and pieces here and there, and then they have all of it. Three, three billion people that are waiting on a false rapture that believe that they can live in sin and disobedience and that our creator is going to send a son to take us out of this and whisk the disobedient away. That sounds really crazy. Okay. Learn to fear Yahuwah. You shall love Yahuwah. 
with all your heart. Bind the laws upon your hand and the funds between your eyes. Write the laws on your doorpost. Do not tempt Yahweh. Do what is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Do not be afraid of your enemies. Remember Yahuwah. Circumcise your heart. Cleave Yahuwah. Swear by his name. Destroy graven images. Do not make an idol of Yahuwah, as the pagans do to their Elohim. Rejoice in all Yahuwah has blessed you with. Do not do what is right in your own eyes. Do not hearken to the words of false prophets. Do not make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. You shall not eat any abominable thing. You shall give to a stranger clean for the dead himself, but you shall not eat of it. Give tithe of your increase of seed year by year. Laws of the end of the seven year release. Do not borrow from the nations. Do not harden your heart, nor shut your hand from the poor. Guard month one of Yahuwah's calendar. Three times a year all males shall appear before Yahuwah. You shall make judges and officers in all your gates. Do not plant ash poles near the altar. There must be two or three witnesses. Hearken unto the prophet Yahuwah is chosen. Prophet tested Deuteronomy. Do not remove your neighbor's property line. How to deal with false witnesses among Torah keepers. The first child is to get double portions. If your brother's cattle or clothes are lost and you find them, you must return them. A woman should not wear it pertains to a man, nor a man wear it pertains to a woman. If you find a bird's nest with a mother's and the babies or eggs, take the babies, but not the mother. If you build a new house with a flat roof that's yet to be lived on, you must put a railing around it. Do not be a prostitute. Do not use dirty money. The laws of divorce. Do not take a person's millstone for a pledge. If you lend to your brother, do not enter his house to get your payment. He must bring it to you. Return his clothing before sunset if that was his pledge. Do not oppress a hired servant that is poor and needy. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. And let's stop right there on that one real quick because there, you know, I've run into a lot of brothers and sisters out there that have, um, there's a lot of abuse in life. And a lot of us, a lot of people out there have been damaged. A tremendous amount of people have been damaged. And I've met some beautiful sisters and beautiful brothers that take on the, um, they, they believe because of their parents and the way their parents were that they are gonna be cursed for this. And even though there are generational curses, lots of things like alcoholism and, and different kinds of things that get, do get passed on, this commandment is very, very clear. We are accountable for us, only us, right? It is not it, the sins of our parents, even though it does bring on generational curses. If you have been able to break that curse by finding the Torah and finding our creator, you're not going to die for the, the sins of your parents. Right. And so that's that's one thing I wanted to, to put out there. One one five four. Do not go back for the forgotten sheep in the field. Leave it for the stranger, fatherless and widow. Do not muzzle your ox when he treads out grain. If your brother dies and has no child, you shall take his wife and be the firstborn after your brother. At the end of seven years, you are to read the Torah at the end of the Feast of his coat. All right, so that is uh, the the laws. These are the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator. Mr. Cole, did you have anything from the... Jeremy just said, no, I lost it. Generational curses can be broken by turning to Yah. Yep. And the Grand says, everyone is broken and in need of the Master. Absolutely. Yeah, There's. I don't think there's any one of us among any anything here that have ever, you know, had a perfect childhood or had something, you know, just like, oh, this is absolutely perfect. We all end up with um, <laughs> with good and with bad. And so, um, yeah, Messiah is the the master. The master is is our healer. And that is that is when we turn and break these generational curses of the Torah, which is exactly right. What Jeremy said, um, that is, that is the way to do it. All right, gentlemen and ladies and gentlemen, we have. Um, an awesome reading for today and this one's going to be short but we have an extracurricular book that n most of you probably have never ever seen that ties along with this that we're going to read right after this and so this is going to be super cool all right everyone ready yep all right let's get rolling here all right so we are in genesis 39 and the top scriptures is a called the targums and yet the targums is is another set of scriptures not even another set of scriptures another kind of a translation is and it just there's some things that are definitely odd and some things that are aligned exactly right and like with everything when we are based in torah with genesis exodus leviticus numbers and deuteronomy and we have this as a foundational point in our life then when we get things that are really super odd we raise our eyebrows and this is where we can you know, chew the meat, spit the bones out, and make sure that nothing ever violates Torah. And so um, we haven't had too many crazy things in the Targums. We did have one that, that said um, the giant Og was like doing the rodeo on the top of Noah's Ark or something of the sort. And, you know, you can look at that and it, it just, there's no such thing that anybody was like the, the giants of old were saved. I don't know if it's true or not, probably not, but that was one of the ones that were weird. But you get a lot of other stuff and the other stuff 
actually corresponds with a lot of the extracurricular readings. So a lot of it may be new, but when you read all of the books together, it starts making sense. So let's get ready to roll. And, then, and again, before um, we begin reading, um, we have 10 alligators with fur and they commonly called uh, pit bulls and we do everything possible to keep them quiet and sometimes they're not. So if we apologize right out of the gate. The longer we go, the more the dogs um, get active and crazy. So we'll, we'll hopefully y'all will keep them quiet. Here we go. Verse one. And Yosef had been taken down to Mitzrayim and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, a Mitzrayite, bought him from the Israelites who had taken him down there. And um, I guess, I, I don't want to spoil the extracurricular books, but you know the, we don't get a lot of details, right? Chap, this verse one, you get, okay, he was brought down there. It, this guy bought him, no big deal. Prior to this, he was beaten. And in fact, Potiphar's wife was involved prior to this. And she ended up getting a eunuch to go and get Joseph. And um, it, it, there's, we'll, we'll be reading that stuff later, but there's always way more to this stuff. Okay, verse two. And it came to be that Yahuwah was with Yosef, and he became a prosperous man and was in the house of his master, the Mitzray. And his master saw that Yahuwah was with him and that Yahuwah made all he did prosper in his hand. So Yosef found favor in his eyes and served him, and he appointed him over his house and gave into his hand all that he had. And it came to be from the time that he appointed him over his house and all that he had that Yahuwah Barak the Mitzray's house for Yosef's sake. And Baraka of Yahuwah was on all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left in Yosef's hand all that he had. And he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. And Yosef was handsome in form and handsome appearance. Okay, now we're going to head up to the Targums at the top and see what they say. But Joseph was brought down into Mitzrayim. And Potiphar, a man of Mitzrayim, a chief of Pharaoh, a chief of the executioners, brought with him the pledge of the Arabians who had brought him down thither. All right, there's, the, there's that little um, meat and uh, bones thing right here. This is something we had never heard of. We had no idea he was the chief of the executioners, right? Um, a chief of the, oh, actually, no, he wasn't a chief. He, it was the chief of the executioners. I guess he was. What do you guys make of this? Um, a man of Mitzrayim, a chief po, of Pharaoh. Potiphar, we're talking about Potiphar here? Yeah, a chief of Pharaoh, a chief of the executioners. I, okay, so we, he was. We knew that he was like a chief of Pharaoh's, we just didn't know what he did. Yeah, well, this brings a little more light on this thing. Yeah, it, it just plays a little fearless, dude. This, is, this makes a tremendous amount of sense why uh, at the end, Joseph is handed over to get beat, right? Because he this is the guy's people, right? The beating people, the executioners. Okay, so the executioners, they bought him with the pledge of the Arabians who had brought him down thither. And the word of Yahuwah was Joseph's helper, and he became a prosperous man in the house of the Mitzrayite master. And his master saw that the word of Yahuwah was his helper, and that Yahuwah prospered in his hand all that he did. And Joseph found favor in his eyes, and he served him, and he appointed him superintendent over his house, and all that he had, he had, he delivered in his hands. And then the other version of the Targum says, and he delivered in his hands and appointed him superintendent. Okay, um, that's kind of scary. If you ever ended up with a job and your boss was the guy who was the leader of the guys that killed everyone, the executioners, that seems pretty... Uh, that pretty, yeah, that's don't, pretty me don't mess up. Yeah, don't mess up. Okay, now we're heading back to the bottom. We're at seven. Yep. And after these events, it came to be that his master's wife lifted up her eyes to Yosef and said, lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, look, my master does not know what is with me in the house and he has given into my hand all that he has. No one is greater in this house than I, and he has not withheld whatever from me but you, because you are his wife, and how shall I do this great evil and sin against Elohim? Now, what great evil is it? We just read the Torah. What commandments would he be breaking? Uh, adultery. Adultery. Yeah, there's all, there's all sorts of stuff that you would get yourself into with this thing, mainly adultery on this part. Plus, the guy's the leader of the executioners. That's that's probably a, one of the things right out of the gate. Yes, like, yeah, what, what does your husband do for a living? Oh, he kills people. Oh, okay. Okay, 10. And it came to be, as he spoke, as she spoke to Yosef day by day, that he did not listen to her, to lie with her, to be with her. And it came to be on a certain day when Yosef went into the house to do his work, and none of the men of the house was inside, that she caught him by his garment, saying, lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. And it came to be when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside. 
let me reread that. And it came to be when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside, that she called to the men of her house and spoke to them, saying, See, he has brought to in to us an ebri to mock us. He came to me to lie with me, and I cried out with a loud voice. And it came to be when he heard that I, lift, that I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled and went outside. And she kept his garment with her until his master came home. And she spoke to him these same words, saying, The Ebri servant whom you brought to us came into me to mock me. So it came to be, as I lifted my voice and cried outside, that he left his garment with me and fled outside. And it came to be, when his master heard the words, which his wife spoke to him, saying, Your servant did to me according to these words, that his displeasure burned. Are we going to stop yet? I'm sad you finish it. There's only okay. three more verses. Okay, so we'll finish this up here, right? And then we'll head to the top. Then Yosef's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the sovereign's prisoners were confined, and he was there in the prison. But Yahuwah was with Yosef and extended kindness to him, and he gave him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. And the prison warden gave him into the hand of Yosef, all the prisons, prisoners who were in the prison, and whatever was done, there was his doing. The prison warden did not look into at any point that was under Yosef's hand because Yahuwah was with him, and whatever he did... Yahuwah made it prosper. Now, this, this account right here, it just, it doesn't really tell you the finite details of what exactly happened. All right, heading back to the targets. And it was from the time he appointed his superintendent over his house and all that he had, Yahuwah prospered the house of the Mitzrayim for the sake of the righteous, of righteousness of Joseph. And the blessing of Yahuwah was on all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand and took no knowledge of anything of his except his wife with whom he lay. And Joseph was of goodly form and beautiful aspect. And it was after these things that the wife of his master lifted up her eyes to Joseph, Joseph and said, Lie with me. But he refused to come near her and said to his master's wife, Behold, my master taketh no knowledge of what is with me in the house and all that he hath he delivered into my hand. There is none in the house greater than I nor have he restricted me from anything but thyself, because thou art his wife. And how can I do this I'm guilty before Yahuwah? And it was when she spake with Joseph this day and the next, and he, and he hearkened not to her to lie with her, lest with her be, he should be condemned in the day of the great judgment of the world to come. It was on a certain day that he entered the house to examine the tablets of his accounts, and there was no man of the house within that she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and went forth into the street. And when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and had gone forth into the street, that she called the men of the house and said, See, this which the Hebrew man hath done, whom your master hath brought to mock us. He came in to lie with me, and I cried with a high voice. And when he heard that, I lifted up my voice, and he left his garment with me and went forth into the street. And she let, let the garment remain until his master came into the house. And she spake to him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant whom thou broughtest to us came in to me to mock me. And then the other version says, And it was when I thundered with my voice. And when his master heard the words which his wife spake with him, saying, According to these things, his wrath became strong. And Joseph's master took counsel of the who put him not to death, but delivered him into the house of the bound, where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the house of the bound. And then the other version says, in the prison house. And the word of Yahuwah was with Joseph's helper, and extended mercy to him, and gave him favor in the eyes of the captain of the prison. And the captain of the prison confided all the prisoners who were in the house to Joseph's hand, and whatever was done there, he commanded to be done. It was not needful for the captain of the prison to watch Joseph after the customs of all prisoners, because he saw that there was no fault in his hands. For the word of Yahuwah is with, with his helper, and that which he did, Yahuwah made it to prosper. All right, now, gentlemen, what do you guys make from, yeah, go ahead, Eli. What do you guys make, do you guys, um, on the extracurricular books, in the books of Jasher and the books of Jubilees, it tells a lot of a different story regarding this. It talks about, um, one, one, it actually talks about the wife, Potiphar's wife, and how she was so in love, she was so enamored with Joseph that it, she just could, she couldn't get over it. Like, it was, it was beyond craziness. And when all her friends were like, why, why, what's going on? She's like, this, this servant won't lie with me. And they didn't understand. And so one time she brought in, um, like this, she did this little feast or some kind of a thing, and she brought them knives and some oranges. And she brought Yosef in there. And as they start gazing upon Yosef, they start cutting their hands. 
And they're like, wow, the beauty of this guy is like unlike anything we've ever seen. She's like, yeah, this is why I'm sick. I, I can't get this guy. And so these are um, when you piece together just what this chapter said versus um, all the extracurricular books. This was a long time thing that was happening. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to read something that um, Boss Clan um, just recently put together. And I actually found an error right out of the gate um, because instead of Yishra Israel, it should be Yisrael. But we took this. Um, this is the Testament of Joseph and um, we restored it. And so it should mostly be completely restored um, the same way the Hallelujah Scriptures does all of their stuff. We have a couple guys here within my family who are masters at reproducing Hallelujah Scriptures works. And so we took all these other books that have been out there, including the, the, the 12 kids. We took all of their testaments and we've restored them all. And so this will be the very first reading that we've ever read with this. And, and it just barely made it online. So um, this absolutely is the story of Joseph. And so um, anything going on in the chat room? Everyone good? Yep. Okay. All right. Much love to you guys in the chat room. Let's let's get going. This is the Testament of Yosef. And if, for anybody who wants to read further or any of this stuff, um, it is on the Yahoo and the Torah.net website. And I posted a link in there. Okay. And Nicole posted a link. And we will also be including this in a new set of scriptures that will be coming out very, very soon. The new set of scriptures, and I'm not talking a PDF. I'm talking about a hard book version which I believe is going to be far more superior to the Hallelujah Scriptures because we actually went through and fixed a whole bunch of typos and a whole bunch of stuff that when the Hallelujah Scriptures stole their work, they uh, they just they left all the, the errors in it. And so you can go to the ISR, the 2003 ISR. It is word for word with the Hallelujah Scriptures, including all the spellings, all of the grammatical weirdness. And so we have a lot of this fixed up. And so in the Scriptures that we're going to put out, it's going to have probably about 90, maybe 100 books in it. And it's going to be big. It's going to be really big. It has not, And Boss Clan isn't doing this. Boss Clan will never, ever, ever make money selling scriptures. But we do have who are trusted brothers who do want to take this manuscript and get it back out to the people so that there is a better alternative than the criminal people at the Holy Scriptures. All right, here we go. The Testament of Yosef. A copy of the Testament of Yosef. When he was about to die, he called his sons and his brothers and said to them, My brothers and my children, listen to Give ear to the words of my mouth. All right, we're about to lose the dog, and they're gone. All right, sorry, guys. <clears throat> in my life, I have seen envy and death, but I have not gone astray. I preserved in the truth of Yahuwah. These, my brothers, hated me, but Yahuwah loved me. They wanted to kill me, but the Elohim of my fathers preserved me. Into a pit they lowered me. The Most High raised me up. They sold me into slavery. Yahuwah of all set me free. I was taken into captivity. The strength of his hand came to my aid. I was overtaken by hunger. Yahuwah himself fed me generously. I was alone, and Elohim came to me. I was in weakness, and Yahuwah showed his concern for me. I was in prison, and the Savior acted graciously on my behalf. I was in bonds, and he loosened me. Slandered, and he testified on my behalf. Assaulted by bitter words of the Mitzrites, and he rescued me. Envied by my fellow slaves, and he exalted me. All right, gentlemen, what do you guys make of this, Kate? Um, he was, Have you ever, you've never heard this I've before. I've never heard this before. Okay, well, come closer so you guys can, you can. Okay, what do you make of this, Kate? Um, he was blessed in everything that he did, right? Even though things were going south for everything, everything was going terribly for him, he was still blessed. He still got extremely blessed in everything that he did. Yeah, absolutely. And since you haven't read this, I'm, I really want your opinion and anyone else's opinion. Think of this, because this is, it gets pretty cool. Okay, chapter two, verse one. And the chief officer of Pharaoh entrusted to me his household. I struggled with a shameless woman who kept prodding me to transgress with her, but the Elohim of my father rescued me from the burning flame. I was jailed, I was whipped, I was sneered at, but Yahuwah granted me mercy in the sight of the prison keeper. For Yahuwah does not abandon those who fear and reverence him, neither in darkness or chains or tribulation or direct need. Okay, now this is, this is something I guess for everybody out there, right? Our creator lives, he loves us, and our dogs are doing their things. Our creator loves us and he will not leave you in darkness. He will not leave you in chains. He is there with you through all of these things. And again, my apologies for the alligators with teeth. They just are crazy. Okay, so guys, if you are feeling like there's something like, um, like you're just in darkness, like our Elohim doesn't love us, like you've been abandoned, take it from Joseph who 
wasn't abandoned, who came through this, and this was his deathbed, I guess, testimony. And so on his dying days, on his dying moments, this is what he says. And so this is our forefathers. This is the, the way that our creator will take care of us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And he will, even if we're in chains, even if we're in darkness, he's there with us. Okay, continue on. For Elohim does not disappoint as does man, nor is he apprehensive like a son of man, nor like an earth born is he weak or frightened away. In all these matters, he takes his stand and in various ways he offers assistance, even though for a brief time, he may stand aside in order to test the inclination and disposition of the soul. Okay, and again, I'd like to talk about this. Cade, what do, you, do you have anything on this? Uh, no more that he was like, he went through these trials, he went through these tribulations, went through all these hard times and still ended up being extremely blessed on everything that he did, even though he was had this woman that was after him, he was staying holy in everything that he was doing. Yeah, and you know, something that he is on his deathbed, right? He is on his way out. And this is the message to everybody out there. Our creator does not disappoint, as man does. Every single one of us have been subjected to the disappointments of man. Our hearts get broken. People don't do what they say they're going to do. It, it, they're, 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 majority of the people say things and they don't even realize they're crushing your heart and soul and spirit. But our creator won't. And he loves you. And he loves us through all of this stuff. Okay, seven. In, t in testings, he showed that I was approved. And in all of them, I per persevered because perseverance is a powerful medicine and endurance provides many good things. That was Mr. Bub saying hello from over there. Okay, chapter three. How often the Mitzrite woman threatened me with death. How often after turning me over to the tormentor, she would call me back and threaten me. But since I was unwilling to have intercourse with her, she kept saying to me, you will be master over me and all my household if you will only give yourself over to me then you will be our ruler, right? And this is what you don't really get a lot of understanding when you just read what we read in, in Genesis, right? It wasn't over after he was in jail. Yeah, it, no, it wasn't. And you can, all the extracurricular books, she came from the time after he was in jail, she kept visiting him, right? It wasn't like he was just like free from this crazy woman. You put him in prison, you think he really wants to see you? Yeah, and that's the thing is somehow she was able to sneak off and nobody was ever telling her husband this, this kind of stuff. Or maybe he knew. I don't know. So anyway, she's promising him that she, he would be master over the house, right? She's enticing him to become the leader of the house. And um, it is, it's, she's kind of crazy. Three, but I recalled my father's words, went weeping in my quarters and prayed to Yahuwah. For those seven years I fasted. So there we go, guys. We have seven years he was in this house being enticed by this woman and yet seem to the Mitzrites like someone who is living luxuriously. For those who fast for the sake of Elohim receive graciousness of countenance. And more stuff, right? More stuff right here. If you're having troubles in your life, if it's not going well, it's probably time to fast because that is what's going to get the, the ear of our creator in a lot of these things. And for seven years, he was doing that. Again, I'm sorry, my dog's over there eating. I don't know why he barks when he's eating. Okay, five. If my master was absent, I drank no wine. For three days, period, periods, I would take no food, but give it to the poor and the ill. Okay, what do you guys make of this? Uh, so there's a lot of sick in jail, so he's helping them out. They can't afford That's food. not it at all. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about. But like, what I just said, if my master was absent, I drank no wine for three days, period. I would take no food, but give it to the poor and he ill. He wouldn't eat unless his master was home. Right, why not? Why didn't he drink any wine on this? Why? Probably because it gets him probably gets yeah. control of his. If the husband's there, there's not gonna be anything happening. He'll be able to stop everything. Why? He'll be able to, he'll be with his wife, and she won't even try that. Yeah, but he, here's the thing: he's he's drinking. No, when his master was gone, he's not drinking. He's not putting himself subjective under any he, problem. He, right. He's not in, he's not under the influence of any kind of stuff because that is the thing. He knew knows this woman is gonna come in, and all of a sudden he gets liquored up and ends up like uh, Noah or something, you know, and has no idea what's going on. Or like Yahuda, right? Yahuda, or like Lot, right? Lot, Yah, Lot, yeah, I don't buy the whole thing with Lot, but um, like Yahuda for sure. Okay, let's continue on. Uh, six, I would awaken early and pray to Yahuwah, weeping over the Mitzrite woman of Memphis because she troubled me exceedingly and relentlessly. I have absolutely no idea why what Memphis means or any of this. Um, maybe that's like a city? city? Yeah. Is it a city? Or, or a race or a deity or something? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's upper case though. Okay, seven. In the night, she would come into me, pretending a mere visit. Because she had no male child, she pretended to regard me as a son. 
For a time, she would embrace me as a son, but then I realized later she was trying to lure me into fornication. When I became aware of this, I lamented to the point of death. After she had gone out, I came to myself and mourned in her behalf for many days because I had recognized her deceit and her de deviousness. I declared to her the words of the Most High, hoping he might divert her from the evil desire. Okay, chapter five. She's chapter four. She's very crafty. Yeah, she is. Yeah, she is. She, especially her husband's the executioner. Imagine, you know, what he would have done to her if he, she, he found her the one doing this. Okay, one. How often then did she flatter me with words as a kadosh man, deceitfully praising my self-control through her words in the presence of her husband? But when she, we were alone, she sought to seduce me. Publicly, she honored me for my self-control, while privately she said to me, have no fear of my husband, for he is convinced of your chastity, so that even if someone were to tell, you, tell him about you, he would not believe it. During all these affairs, I stretched out on the ground, praying Elohim to rescue me from her treachery. When she achieved nothing by means of it, she began to approach me for instruction so that she might learn the word of Elohim. And she kept saying to me, if you want to abandon the idols, have intercourse with me, and I shall persuade my husband to put away the idols, and we shall walk in the Torah of your Elohim. So she's uh, trying every last ditch effort possibly. And you know, if you go to a person who knows Torah and somebody's like, hey, teach me the Torah, you're gonna be like, oh great, let's, let, what do you wanna know? Let's, let's talk about it, where should we start? Right? She was only doing that to seduce him. It was just more, more of the seven year um, attacks. Six, but I kept telling her that Yahuwah did not want worshipers who come by means of uncleanness, nor would he be pleased with adulterers, but with those who were pure in heart and undefiled in speech. Nevertheless, she was consumed with jealousy, wanting to fulfill her desire. But I devoted myself the more to fasting and prayer that Yahuwah might rescue me from her. Okay, thoughts as we're going into chapter five? Um, um, why didn't he say anything to Potiphar? Um, like, hey, Potiphar, I, I, I wouldn't believe him. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. And uh, like Potiphar trusted him, Potiphar who would have been like, moved him out of somewhere just for, like the moment to like stop whatever's going on. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. Good question. One, on chapter five. Again, on another occasion, she said to me, if you do not want me to commit adultery, I shall kill myself. I shall kill my husband by a drug and take you as my husband. When I heard this, I tore my clothing and said to her, woman, show reverence to Elohim. Do not commit this wicked deed, lest you be utterly destroyed. For you should know that I shall make it known to all that this is your scheme. Filled with fear, she pleaded with me not to disclose her plan. Then she withdrew but kept trying to entice me with gifts and every manner of pleasurable thing. Okay, next chapter. Later, she sent me food mixed with enchantments. I find this chapter very interesting. When the eunuch who was carrying it arrived, I looked up and saw a frightening man who offered me a sword along with a bowl. So I perceived it was a trick to lead me astray. All right, I have no idea what this is even meaning, but it gets, it gets even stranger. Um, I don't know why, I don't know if there was, whatever was in the food was like a massive drug that, that he was, I, I don't know why he would be offered a sword. Whatever it was, um, he figured it out that don't eat the food. When he departed, I wept. I tasted neither one item nor the other of the food he brought. A day later, she came to me and said, when she recognized the food, why didn't you eat the food? And I said to her, because you filled it with a deadly enchantment. How can you say I do not go near idols, but only to Yahuwah? Now then, understand the Elohim of my father revealed to me through a messenger your wickedness, but I have kept it for this reason, to shame you, if somehow by seeing it, you might repent. In order for you to learn that the evil of the ungodly will not triumph over those who exercise self-control in their worship of Elohim, I will take this and eat it in your presence. When I had said that, I prayed aloud, may the Elohim of my fathers and the angel of Abraham be with me, and I ate. When she saw this, she fell upon her face at my feet weeping. I raised her up and warned her, and she agreed with me that she should no longer commit this impiety. I don't know what that situation was. I don't know if anyone in the chat room might have something um, on this particular part. Very interesting, right? Um, yeah, this, yeah, Windfeather says this woman's scary. Yeah, she's, uh, she, she's, she's the one, right? She's crazy. Okay, verse 7, chapter 7. But her heart was still inclined to evil, and she turned over in her mind how she might entrap me. Shortly, she was sighing deeply and depressed, even though she was not sick. When her husband saw her, he said to her, why are you so downcast? She responded to him, I am suffering from a pain in my heart and groans of my Ruach have taken hold of me. He tried to cure her with words. Then she seized the occasion and came running to me while her husband was still outside and said to me, I shall hang myself 
or shall or I'll hurl myself over the cliff if you will not lie with me. Since I perceived that the Ruach of Balar, Satan, was troubling her, I prayed to Yahuwah, but I said to her, Why, wretched woman, are you troubled and disturbed, blinded by sin? Remember that if you kill yourself, Asthena, Asthetha, your husband's concubine, who is filled with envy of you, will beat your children. Thus you will destroy your memory from the earth. So he was trying to convince her that, hey, um, <laughs> you're, no, you, you, yeah, you kill yourself. Your your concubine, who obviously doesn't like the wife, is going to beat your children. That, <laughs> I just found that very interesting. Six, and she said, "See then, you do love me. That is enough. Only keep contending for my life and that of my children, and I shall cling to my expectation of gaining my desire." <laughs> she did not understand that I spoke in this way for my master's sake and not hers. For if anyone is subjected to the passion of desire and is enslaved by it, as she was, even when he hears something good, he receives it with a view to aid his wicked desire. Isn't this, isn't this crazy? I mean, this is exactly what it was, right? She heard he was trying to basically, you know, save his master. And um, she's like, well, she, she's like, well, you, you must be uh, trying to save my life. I think it's time to start talking to Potiphar just a bit. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay, continue on. Eight, I tell you, my children, it was about the sixth hour when she left me. Bending my knees before Yahuwah, I prayed a whole day and a whole night. Toward dawn, I arose, crying and begging deliverance from her. This is like the uh, Jezebel, right? This is like the one. That's what Jeremy said, Jeze oh. Jezebel spirit. Yeah, no doubt. <clears throat> Finally, she grasped my clothing, determined to force me into having intercourse with her. When I saw, therefore, that in her madness she had seized my garments, I left it and fled naked. She held on to it and brought false accusation against me. Her husband came and threw me in prison in his own house, in his own house. Then the next day he whipped me and sent me to Pharaoh's prison. All right, so this is it. Isn't this crazy? This guy, he's the executioner. He had a prison in his own house. Why would he have a prison in his own I house? Know, I find that creepy, you know? Like, it doesn't keep the prisoners keep you up all night? Yeah, you have a headache and you decide you're having a bad day, so you go beat the prisoners or something? I don't know. It's like, are you trying to see the prisoners? Like, bang, hey, hey, hey. Yeah, well, yeah, they would be far enough. You wouldn't hear that. I mean, you have to have a big house. Yeah, well, they, it's, these, these are big houses, no doubt. Okay, so let's continue on. When I saw, therefore, that in her madness she had seized my garment, I left and fled naked. She held on to it and brought false accusation against me. Her husband came and threw me in prison in his own house. Then the next day he whipped me and sent me to the Pharaoh's prison. When I was in fetters, the Mitzrite woman was overtaken with grief. She came and heard the report how I gave thanks to Yahuwah and sang praise, to the house of, to, praise in the house of darkness and how I rejoiced with cheerful voice, glorifying my Elohim because I was set free from this Mitzrite woman. All right, so um, let's get it. Let's, uh, we're going to stop when he's out of prison because that will um, be for the next weeks when we do this. So let's see what chapter 9 says here. There we go. And there, there she is. She, he's, he's in chains. He's been beaten um, just in darkness. And then she comes again. This, this is like the, the woman that will not. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is a bad woman. Okay. Many times she sent messages to me saying, Acquiescence in fulfilling my desire, and I will release you from the fetters and liberate you from the darkness. How it is Potiphar never heard about this, I have zero idea. Dude, this has been for like seven years, man. Surely someone's, he knew something. Someone's got to, some of those people have to know about this. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like everyone that was in a union with this, like Joseph was trying to save his life, and then all the rest of the servants were just like... Well, we know from the extracurricular books that all her friends knew all about this. Um, the eunuch that brought the sword, um, I don't know if he knew what was going on with this food or not. I don't exactly know what the enchantments was, but it's very interesting. Two, not even in my mind did I yield to her. For Elohim loves him who in a den of wickedness combines fasting with chastity rather than the man who in king's chambers combines luxury and license. If a man strives for self-control and at the same time desires glory and the Most High knows that it is appropriate for him, he brings it about for him, even as he did for me. How often, as though she were ill, she came down at odd hours and listened to my voice as I prayed. When I was aware of her groaning, I fell silent. So this creeper... This creepy, creepy, like creepy. hiding behind the walls. He's praying. Yeah, this is the ultimate creeper. This is the one that came and. Um, what about the rest of the inmates there? They're all probably like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Five. For when I had been with her in her house, she would bare her arms, thighs, and breasts so that I might lie with her. For she was wholly beautiful and splendidly decked out to entice me. But Yahuwah protected me from her manipulations. Wow. So she was, uh, she was just a, a very, um, she was a very bad woman. 
Okay. Demonically possessed. Demonically possessed. That's what Jeannie, yeah. not this world says. You're right. That is exactly right, Jeannie. Okay, I think this is the last chapter we're going to do on 10 because I think it's going to finish up here. So let's see what Joseph says. So you see, my children, how great are the things that patience and prayer with fasting accomplish. And I guess, you know, if, if there's something that a lot of us could take away from this, or at least something I'm taking away from this, is I probably need to fast a lot more. It sounds like there is a lot of really, really, really super, super good things that you are able to accomplish with fasting. And um, it seems like Joseph was able to get through a lot of this by his prayer and by his fasting. And that just goes to show you that our Elohim Most High, Yahuwah, he listens to us. And you may not get an immediate answer, but he's there. And it's like our father. And it's like the love of our lives is our creator. And he has given us just an amazing life. Two, you also... If you pursue self-control and purity with patience and prayer with fasting and humility of heart, and there's a typo right there, Yahuwah will dwell with you because he loves self-control. And when the Most High dwells, even if, he, if, if envy befalls someone or slavery or slander, Yahuwah who dwells with him on account of his self-control not only will rescue him from these evils, but will exalt him and glorify him as he did for me. So a lot to do with chastity, a lot to do with staying pure, a lot to do with staying cling, a lot to do with complete and full trust in our Elohim. Four, for these problems beset all mankind, either in deed or word or thought, which it very much does. For my brothers knew how much my father loved me, yet I was not puffed up in my thoughts. Even while I was a child, I had the fear, reverence of Elohim in my heart, for I understood that all things pass away. I did not arouse myself with evil intent, but honored my brothers, and out of regard for them, even when they sold me, I was silent, rather than telling the Yishmaelites that I was the son of Jacob, a great and righteous man. All right, I think that is it. Um, get us through our last thing, Eli. Um, everyone out there in the chat, um, thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. I hope that it is, um, it is absolutely beautiful. Um, and yeah, thank you guys for, for hanging out with us. Um, Jaden is going to read us an Aaronic blessing, and uh, you got that over there, Jade? Yep, I'm getting there. Okay, and this is the, this is the same blessing, right, guys? We, we hope that you guys are blessed. We love you guys, and I know that you guys, since you guys are Torah-keeping people, that Yahuwah will walks with you guys. He dwells with you guys, and, you know, that's something that we want to take all the way to our graves. We don't ever want to look to the left. We don't want to look to the right. We don't want to... Um, fall into this world because the worldly traps that we are in, you know, we're, most of us are all stuck in Babylon. We're in the Babylon system and everything around us is evil. And this is where we need to be set apart. We need to be like Yosef, who was able to have seven years of self-control under things where this man was weeping. And I don't think this guy was a beta male. I don't think he was weak by any means. I think he was humbled in his heart. I think he was what Yah wants us to be. And that is seeking him, and that is putting all of our cares, all of our stress, everything there, in on in on, on him. And so, all right, guys. Um, Eli, what do you got for uh, Jake? Let's do our Aaronic blessing. And you have spoken to Moses, saying, Speak unto El Aaron and unto his sons, saying, On this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, You who will bless you and guard you, you who will make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you, you who will lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Okay. Much love to everybody out there. We love y'all. Thank you guys very, very much. Let's wrap it up right here. What do you got? Oh. Let's rend the heavens, son. Yeah. Let's get it done.
right, guys. May Yahuwah bless you and keep you. May he forever shine his light on you guys. May you forever find his Torah and the grace of our Creator. And may you find the love of Messiah Yahushua and the faith of Messiah Yahushua. We love you all. Have a wonderful week. We love you, fam. Right. We're out. Right. Shalom. Shalom.